So I'm really just responding to what I believe God was was saying, and I, I sort of alluded to it um, last week, in that um, while when I woke up, maybe just let me give you some context, is I was, the last couple of sermons, and especially the one before last week about God just moving sovereignly on, a, on the earth and, and the sovereignty of who He is um, was really just heavy on my heart and thinking about that and trying to sort of understand, God, but what are you doing in the earth at the moment? Because I understand that, that He is sovereign, that He does amazing things, and I just need to align actually to what He's busy doing. So, so this was in my, in my heart, and I was, I was thinking and pondering on this, and, and I woke up really with the presence of God in my, my room like I haven't experienced uh, recently necessarily, but, but there was just this anointing, and I was saying, Father, what, what, what I believe just God just saying to me is that He is about to do something, and this is the reason for, for the sermon this morning, but this is also going to be the reason for the fast this week, and I'm trusting God for prophetic movement. And I believe there's going to be a prophetic movement that comes from here. And, and I just want to kick off with Joel 2, verse 1. It says this, Blow a trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, it is near. Now I know most of you, or some of you have said, you know, the, surely this must be sort of the last days and God is about to do things in our midst, Right? Who senses that? Who's going, Father, something is about to happen? I think we all can agree that as the enemy is moving on the earth, as he is trying to bring darkness over the earth, we are looking at the day of the Lord that is coming, and it is coming. And I know God is about to move in this earth in a way that we haven't seen or experienced necessarily before. Now, I said to you last week as well that... Um, I believe as, as we obey what God is saying, as we step prophetically into what God is about to do, it's going to affect every one of us. Your comfort zone is going to get not so comfortable anymore. You see, because there's a place if I obey, obey God, He's not bothered about my comfort. Why? Because He's sovereign. And He can do what He wants to do. And that is the reason for blowing the shofar this morning is we are blowing the trumpet in Zion, in the church, in the body of Christ. And we are saying the day of the Lord is coming. It is here. And he is about to do amazing things in our lives. Now, just maybe to give you some context about the prophet Joel. And here we are in one of the minor prophets again. We've been in a couple of them over, over the last couple of months. But here we see Joel in a time of Israel where there was great devastation, where the locusts came in and they, there was nothing left. They chowed everything. You know, it was like this wave after wave, the swarm after swarm coming into the country and devouring everything. And there's no harvest, there's no fruit, there's nothing. They just eat up everything. Now, have you ever experienced a swarm like that? Hello, come here, not to We've got a border crossing and they haven't got passports. They can't come this way. All right, so, but I, I remember actually one year driving down to Cape Town. And um, we actually got lost too. Just after we got lost, we missed the turn off. All right, so, young, we were more worried about the sun, you know, getting us ready for the beach so that we can be nice and, and tanned while, when we get here that... And, and, and it was me and Lorette's brother that were talking and talking. And, and there's a split that you have to sort of just take on the way to Cape Town. Who of you know that stupid split? In recent times, I believe they've changed the board so you can now see the split. But in, in those days, there was just like, oops, it was miss. So in any case, we missed the split. And we're going down this road, traveling, chatting, having a ball, tanning, everything. And the next moment, there in the distance, there's this cloud. Sure, I hide, and I'm thinking, and I'm driving. Of course, it has to be me that's driving. I mean, and I'm thinking, what's that now? And the next moment, it's net torsop. I mean, it's it's like 
everything here against the window. And, and who of you have ever hit a swarm like that? And what's the first thing that you do? And then what? You walk by faith. You drive by faith, right? Because your wipers goes on and everything goes... And, and you see nothing. And it's not jam. So we hit this thing and... and, and um, I'm not knowing where I'm going. Think of this now. I hit the swarm, so I don't know what's coming. And in any case, we, we, we go through this, and, and you have to stop on the other side and, and try and just make sense of your window and all the rest of it. But, but I have sort of, when, when I read this scripture, I, I understand or, or have a limited understanding of what Joel is writing about here, of the swarms just coming into Israel and devouring everything, and everything is just gone. Now, can you imagine the people? You know, just before that, the harvest is looking good. Everything is ready. You know, we're sort of getting excited about what's coming. You know, there's, there's a harvest coming. God is going to bless us abundantly, and it's absolutely going to be amazing, right? And then 2020 arrives. The swarm of swarms. All right, and it and it takes out everything, it stores up everywhere, and the harvest seems like it's just it's just gone. Right? By the way, we had a great year in function last night. It was so awesome to celebrate what God is doing. Lekker gekeer, lekker geëet, and lekker gesokkie. If you weren't there, then we're so sorry you didn't make it. But um, we'll share some photos a bit later. Um, and Joel is just reflecting on what is happening here. And, and as he, obviously, as he now prophesies, as he brings God's word, that is sort of the context of where Israel is at the moment. Now, what does a prophet do? He, he, he steps into a time like this. He steps into a time where there's, where there's devastation or where, where God is actually just wanting and declares what, that God wants to do things to come, right? He reveals what God is doing. And this is what Joel is doing. So, in Joel, he actually starts speaking about Jesus and the salvation that is coming and that salvation will actually be there for every person. That it's not just going to be in the way in the traditions that they followed, but it's going to be in a way that God is, there's a new way that God is bringing to pass. Now, obviously, there's a way that God actually uh, applies that to that nation and that generation in that time. But prophetically, he is speaking ahead. And he's saying, listen, this is coming. There's salvation coming. So he's the prophetic voice of God in that time. Now, if we talk about prophetic movement, then we have to recognize that there's a place where we have to hear what God is saying in the midst of devastation and prophetically start moving and stepping into that, correct? And that's what I believe God wants to say to us this morning. So as I said, I was just praying and saying, God, what do you want to do at this time? And what I believe is that, that God is saying to me that we are caught up so much in reality that we are missing the prophetic. That we are so stuck up with everything that is going on that we are missing what's happening in the spirit. And, and listen, I, I believe the, the sermons, uh, you know, about what God is doing and his sovereignty and stuff is, is timeless for us to understand what he is about to do and not what we have to do. Because if you're anything like me, I, I'm, I'm a bit of a problem solver. I see a problem, I fix a problem. No? Can my wife and children, even yesterday I was honored for, for saying it's not broken until Kuba says it's broken. And in our house, that's the truth. You know, even my parents are now experiencing this where it's not broken until I say, okay, go is him back. It's now done. <laughs> Except the laptop. Yes. <laughs> there's, a, there's a point where I have to uh, recognize defeat. Yes, yes. Electronics is a bit of that. Electronics, I feel like if, if it doesn't work, hit it. And apparently that doesn't work for electronics. So, But we, you know, God is about to, some, to do something and, and we need to prophetically align with that. And 
For us to do that, there needs to be a prophetic, prophetic inclination and movement for us to walk in. So, what is God about to do nowadays? Do you have any expectancy? Do you discern? What is, what is God waking up in your heart prophetically of what he's about to do in our midst? Now, I guess the, 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 the one thing that we need to understand is that we cannot discern that in the flesh. I cannot discern what God is doing prophetically by relying on my five senses and understanding what is happening, even the news and media and all the rest of it. That's not going to prophetically necessarily align me to what God. If my spirit is not aligned with God, then I'm going to miss what he is doing. Now, there's one thing that I realized, realized as God was speaking to me the, that morning. I just felt he said that we, we see one thing in Scripture that Jesus does not do. And it kind of, I went, what? But in Scripture, I actually don't see Jesus responding or, what's this word I use here, reacting to what the devil was doing. Have you noticed that? He wasn't going, oh, the devil is busy there, let's go there, you know. Oh, oh, is there something happened there, let's go minister there. Did he do that? You don't see that Jesus responds to what the devil's agenda is in the earth at his time. And I thought, wow, that is so true. The reality is Jesus was walking in the anointing of God in his life. He was walking even prophetically. He knew what was God was calling to, and he was doing that. And what happens when he did that? The demons flee. They even go like, we know you. Even when, when, when Satan tempted Jesus, Jesus wasn't freaked out because he knew what God was actually doing in his life and that's why he could also resist him and use scripture and, and, and say to him, but this is the will of God. He wasn't going like, oh, you know, nice corn and crack or anything like that. He was just, he was focused on what God was doing. The result of that was actually the opposite. The devil and his foes were actually scared of him. They feared him because he was walking in his authority. They reacted to his presence, not him to their presence. No? Now, I believe we as a church, and listen... I'm going to say this and I'm saying it carefully, but I, I've got so much respect for prayer. But I feel that the church at this time must stop responding to what the enemy is doing. And with what the enemy is busy doing in the world. You know, we hear of something that happens in the earth and what do we do? We pray. Should we not have prophetically understood what is coming and spoken into it? in that way rather. Now, I don't know if that's happening, but that's just what I'm thinking is, as a church even, we see need in the, church, in the world, and then what do we do? We respond. We are reacting to a lot of the stuff that the devil is stirring up in this world. We are just moving and going where he, and we're trying to hit the fires and, you know, uh, also brand blisters. We're just trying to contain it so that it's sort of normal. Spoke about a thermostat and a thermometer not too long ago, if you remember that. What's the difference between the two? It's on YouTube, you can go listen to it. You see, in responding, we are being kept busy actually by the devil's plan. He's doing stuff. We respond. He's moving. We respond. He causes devastation. We respond. Is that right? Is that what we're doing? Is that all we're doing? I hope not. Okay? There's a thing with war. If you go to war, and, and we'll speak a bit about war here because I think this is a spiritual war that we are in at the moment, but um, if we... 
if you go to war, it's never a good idea to go to war on the other guy's terms. In other words, if I go to war with Zimbabwe, I'm always in a deficit when it comes to knowing the land, understanding the world, everything there, when I'm going there. They know the roots. They know the plants. They know the lie of the land. They know when it's better to go where. You know, they know where there's mud and where there's rivers and stuff. So they can strategically outwit me on every corner. So it's always a good idea to fight the enemy on your terms, not their terms. Not to go where he is, but to allow him to come to you and to face him on your terms. But sometimes I think in our zeal, we just run into enemy territory. And then we get blasted to pieces and we wonder, what is happening, Lord? Where are you? Why are you not with us? But we need to fight the enemy on God's terms. Not on the devil's terms. So I believe God is raising at this time. He's raising that army that is going to do exactly that. He's going to walk with him and they're going to enforce God's will. Like Jesus walked on this earth and did what the Father instructed him to do in the same way, this army will walk in this earth and bring to pass what God is actually wanting to do. Now listen, I'm not taking away where we've been to up to this time. I'm not critical about the church and everything. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying what what, what we have done to this point might not work for the next phase. And we need to recognize what God is busy doing right now in his sovereignty. What is he doing? Ezekiel 37.10 says this. And you know Ezekiel, where he speaks to the bones and God's like, you know, can these bones live? And he's like, okay, no, you know, Lord. You know, when we we sort of looked at the... (laughs) When we looked at the, uh, I wanted to choose a nice picture to represent what, what I believe God is saying. And, and I was with Lorette on the WhatsApp and I'm like, you know, this is the line of what I believe God is saying. And, and what do you think? And she goes, dry bones. So I said, yeah, that just could look a bit weird as the opening slide, you know. So I, I Googled and there's this big heap of skeletons. Just lying there, and, I th- and you know, what do you, what? <laughs> Slap that on as the, the, the first photo. I said, no, that might not look so good on, on YouTube and, 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 you know, Facebook and stuff. What is going on in this church? <laughs> <laughs> but the reality is, if I was him standing in front of those dead bones and God says, can they live? You know, I would have said, <laughs> no. they dead. they checked out. It's done. Compos. That's where they're going. Yet the prophet has the foresight to say, but God, you know, and what you want to do. Okay, so Ezekiel 30, 17, so I prophesied as he commanded me. Ah, I love that. Just hear that. He says, I prophesied as he commanded me, because God tells him what to say. Huh? God didn't say like, okay, you know, prophet, risk it. Let's see, Boyki. Let's see if you've got this. You know, give it your best shot. No, he did not. He says, listen, I want you to say to these bones, and God instructs him. So he says, listen, I prophesy as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up on their feet, an exceeding great army. I'm going like, yes. And I'm looking, you know, in this world today and, and what the devil is doing and we're all freaked out with 2020 and, 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 and et cetera, et cetera. Just read the news and be freaked out. No? Nah? But do we hear the voice of God? Do we see that God is about to raise up an exceedingly great army? Because you know what? God is not on the losing side. Nah? He's on the winning side. He's not caught off guard by 2020. He's not surprised by everything that has happened this year. He's not, you know, even your emotional state and everything that's going on. He's not surprised by it. But I can tell you, he's about to raise up a mighty army. An exceedingly great 
on me. So you better be ready to enlist. Because this was one of the things you have to do when you go to army. You have to say, Kuparal, kuparal. You know, I don't, and I said this to the guys at the year function last night. I believe what God has just made me aware of is that each one of you have been on the journey this year in your life. And you're probably still on that journey. And some of you have taken 2020 better than the others have taken it. Some of you have struggled with this, what is happening. Some of you are still struggling. But we cannot neglect to acknowledge that God is on a journey with you in this year. You know, when we started off this first sermon in this year, I, I remember saying that what God did in 2019 was in preparation for 2020. <laughs> and you're all going like, yeah, right, now. Nah. How could you have said that? But you know, there's so much that has happened that pre actually prepared us for this year. Now I want to say to you, what he has done in 2020 is in preparation for 2021. Okay, now you're going to go with shush. Don't say a word further. <laughs> no? Now you're just like, where's the door? Can I leave now? But you know what? I believe God is preparing us, even, even stripping us of stuff. Our own comforts, our own securities, our own, uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, the things in which we trust and, and so the th stuff we thought was okay. He's stripping us because he's readying us for what he's going to do in 2021. You see, in this exceedingly great army has got one purpose. And that is to execute his will and his plans. You see, when God raises up an army, it's for no one else's glory. It's for his. His own glory. He's raising up an army that will understand, will, that will hear his voice, and that will obey him. An army that will go, and that will go boldly. Now, some of you have just shut down because I used the word go. So the question is, though, will you enlist? Are you ready to go? <laughs> See, saints, I believe it's time to do things differently here, but it's, this, it's time for this army of God to arise. It's really time that the devil starts having sleepless nights. Because you woke up. And he's now afraid, he's now scared because the saints are marching on. The saints got up. The army of God is standing up and they're doing what God is instructing them to do. And you know what? He cannot do anything about it. It's not saying that he won't try. It is time to move. It's not time to sit any longer. It's time. You know, when I, when I had that moment with God and, 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 and realizing that God is raising up this army, God is about to, to, to mobilize his people in this world, he said, I, I had this sort of picture where I see, you know, the worship leaders going and, and going into the township, for instance, and, and going and leading worship in there. They're just worshiping God. No pre-planned gathering, no great media stuff, nothing. Just going and worshiping God there. And everybody goes, what, Kailicha? No. But this is where faith kicks in. This is where obedience kicks in. I heard and felt that God is saying it's the time to, to release the, the, the evangelists. To let them loose. And say, go. To get the teachers to start teaching the word of God boldly. And not just here. But everywhere God is calling them to do. So how is God going to, how are we going to step into what God is about to do in our life? How do we do this? 
how, what, what needs to change? I want to say to you, ask you, what is your holy discontent? Laurette spoke about it when she spoke about the churches, the three churches. What is that thing that is in your heart that is stirring? That thing that is burning in your heart and it's probably been there for years already and you've kind of just been pushing it to the side because how can you actually do that thing? How must I do that, Lord? Let's use a simple example. Maybe, maybe you know, the elderly is on your heart. And you're going, but, but I, I don't know how. I think Lorette said it as well. Just start with the one. Just start with the one. If you don't have a holy discontent, if you don't know what God is starting to stir in your heart, then I, I want to ask you to start praying. And this is what the fast is about, by the way. We want to hear what God is saying to us at this time. We want to draw close to him. And when it, so just by the way, this fast is not about the venue. So if you had any thoughts that it's about us needing a venue, it's not about that. This is about what God wants to do in the earth right now. And we want to align with that. The venue will follow. It's no klaar gewaar oor die venue. You know, if you're unsure of what God is calling you to do, maybe just pray and go. Just do something. Go with someone that knows what they want to do. Learn from them. Even if it freaks you out. That's okay. Just go with him. But whatever you do, don't be stationary. Don't sit still. Don't wait any longer. Move. Because I really believe at this time, God wants to release his army. You see, it's, it's one thing to do church, to do prayer meetings, and everything here. It's time to go. You're here still. Okay, Benny. Let me give you some ideas of what I just kind of thought of. What, what does God want to do? You know, we want to see evangel evangelistic outreaches. We want to see prophetic walks and prayer meetings. We want to see outreaches to children, marriage outreaches, financial outreaches, worship outreaches, outreaches to individuals. To homes, to people, Outreach, art outreaches, anything that will get us to a place where God can use this voice, this body, this talents, and everything that is placed in me to spread the gospel, to bring the truth. You know what? Now, and it's it's going to reach everyone: the poor, the needy, the the wealthy, everybody. It's time to go. And please, if you go, please take someone with you. Don't ever go alone. Jesus sent them out two by two, right? So it's time to take someone with you. And I want to make this clear that this is not going to be something that's going to be on the church's calendar. It's not something that we're going to drive from the church office. It's not something that we're going to initiate from the eldership or anything, is going to be a place where you as an individual person obey God and step out into what He is calling you to do. So I'm not going to tell you, go to Kailicha and do a worship thing. You're going to see God's face. He's going to stir that holy discontent with you. He's going to work in you, and He's going to go there. No, 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 listen, we're not necessarily going to start with Kailicha, but we're going to start. Excuse, correction, you are going to start. You see, so many people come, so many times people come to me and say, Quibus, why is the church not doing X, Y, and Z? My answer is very simple. It's because someone is not doing it. You see, I cannot fulfill and do every aspect of ministry in this church. You will kill me. If you are worried about the elderly, go. If you are worried about the poor and the needy, go. 
Whatever is stirring in your heart, whatever God is working in your heart, I believe God wants to release you to step into that. There's no time to wait anymore, saints. There's no clear. You see, and as we go, we are not responding to what the devil is doing. We are actually taking the kingdom out. And you know what's going to happen? He's going to have sleepless nights. Because you are on the move. The gospel is spreading. The kingdom of God is just expanding. People's lives are changing. Why? Because the pastor is going, no. Because you and I are going. And listen, you don't need me to go. If there's one thing I've learned in ministry and in my years in the church, is sometimes you go. You stomp your cup, you know, you hit the, it, you learn as you go sometimes. And sometimes it's a good idea to go to, with someone that's done this before. But you know, sometimes we also only want to do that. We want to go with someone that's done it before so that, so that we, you know, we just don't want to be embarrassed. You see, the ball is in your court this morning. Are you going to obey God? And I really just want you to understand, this is not about the shofar vision, although we move as shofar. Okay? That's what God's calling us to be, we, this family. But it's not about that. It's not about even that document that we've put up there, what we believe God wants to build in this, this congregation. It's about you obeying God with a stirring that is placing in your heart. No, listen, as a pastor, I know this is very dangerous. And probably as a bit of a control freak, I'm thinking, how are we going to do this? And it's okay. I'm letting go. But God will still use the leadership and the people here to give direction and to steer you. So you're not a lone ranger. Let me maybe make that clear as well. We are still part of this family. But the one thing that cannot happen anymore is that we just sit. Joel 2 verse 9 says this, 2 11. Speaking about this army of God. They say they rush into the city. Uh, what's that guy's name that sang the song? I used to love the song. They rush into the city. They run along the wall. They climb into houses. I mean, these guys are creative. Okay? They enter through windows like thieves. Cheslin, rustig no boy. Okay? The earth quakes in their presence and the sky shakes. You know, that's what I see. That's what I'm, I feel God wants to do is that when this army starts moving, the sky, the earth, everything's going to shake at the presence of God because they are just going. The sun and the moon turn dark and the stars no longer shine. The Lord shouts orders, out orders to his army. His forces are very large. So the commander is speaking. He's saying, go there, go there, do this exact. And his army goes, we're just doing this. The troops that carry out his commands are mighty. The day of the Lord is extremely terrifying to those that do not know him. It's going to freak them out. Yes. Okay, so it's just me that's excited. Who can endure it? You know what? If the, if the saints of God start moving by the Spirit of God in this, in this world, it's going to shake this earth like never before. It's, it's going to be, you know, where the devil tries to do that, the, the saints are going on here. Not bothered necessarily by that. You know, yes, praying as we're going and maybe even sending troops out there, but we're going, we're not stopping. We are hitting this land with anointing and the presence of God in a big way. And the enemy is going to go, oh, wait, 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 this is not working. Hey, this, there's Gemors there, we need to, to go there. Let's go stop them. And then when he tries to stop them there, there's a, there's a group here coming out this side, and they're going, yes, this is what God is saying, and prophetically starts moving and doing incredible things in, their, in, the, in, the, in the name of Jesus. Jesus. 
See, I believe as this army of God is going to move, revival is going to break out. Come on, let's, let's talk about this. Who of you have been on a mission? Who of you went before the mission? Absolutely, I can do this. <laughs> Who of you got on the mission and saw things happening through your life that was like amazing? <laughs> that it wasn't you, right? Zelen no skom. But isn't it true that when you go on a mission and you get it to the other side, you've never prophesied one word in your life. Suddenly you prophesy or you pray for someone and, and God gives you a dream or, or, you know, I don't know, go on a mission and find out what God does. And that's exactly what we're going to do. And we're not going to Japan or India, sorry Rolf, or... We are going to be faithful to Jerusalem. We're going to step out. As this army goes, they will plunder the camp of the enemy. The harvest is ready. Ready to be picked. As this army goes, they will light fires. The fires of God, they will light it in this world. And you know what? The land, the face of the land will change. The demof- not the demographic, the, the, the layout is going to change because the army of God is going. Because the church has left the building. Amen. Imagine we put that sign up on, on, the, on the 31st of, of November. The church has left the building. Look for us in the streets. Okay. You see, saints, prayer alone cannot change this world any longer. Do we need to pray? Absolutely. Do we need to fast and pray? Absolutely. Do this, does scripture say pray continuously, fervently? Yes, it does. But Jesus still did say, go. And I follow Jelle Kaart, I say Makaran, because of one word with two letters in them which says go. He never said stay. He said gather, get together, have this, and go. You see, we understand that without faith, you know, it is impossible to please God. And that faith without works is dead. So we can just throw those scriptures in there as well. So church is time. It's time that we move. It's time that we align prophetically with what God is doing. And you know what? Just in terms of prophetic movement, for you as an individual, maybe this means that you prophetically step out. Outside of your comfort zone, outside of your, your context, your workload, your financial burdens, your, your, call it what you want. But prophetically aligning to what God is doing and saying, Father, I, I'm doing what you want to do. Now, still make your business work and your, be faithful at your job and all this stuff. But, but when you go there, even go prophetically to your work. Joel 2 verse 12 says this. But even now declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, crying and mourning. So we've declared a fast. Just by the way. Tear your hearts, not your clothes. So this is a hard thing. This is not a because the pastor said so thing. Really is not. This is about your heart before God. Okay? Return to the Lord your God. He is merciful and compassionate, patient, and always ready to forgive and to change his, his plans uh, about disaster. So even this morning, God was saying to you, Listen, come repent. I want to heal you. I want to restore you. Who knows? He may reconsider and change his plan and leave a blessing for you. You know, a lot of people can say a lot of stuff about the world. And, you know, we can prophesy that the world is now going to be a gemors. But God's got a blessing for us that we need to walk into. Amen?
Then you could give grain offerings and wine offerings to the Lord your God. Blow the ram's horn in Zion. Schedule a time to fast. Call for an assembly. Gather the people. So that is what we've done. That is what we've done. We have called the assembly. We have scheduled the fast. It's happening tomorrow to Thursday. We're going to assemble. I want you to reprioritize your diary. Because I believe prophetically this is a very profound time for us. And I'm trusting God. And this is where I now get undone. Is that what will happen after this prayer and fast. I'm trusting God is going to be amazing. And that the devil is going to have sleepless nights. Because the saints of God is obeying God, hearing his instructions, and going. Assemble the leaders, gather the children, they can also be involved. Even the nursing infants, and even the grooms leave their rooms. Okay? Hendrik and Ellery, you are honeymoon is no work. So saints, I know we fast in the past, and that rhymes, so that must be true. Um, but we've done a lot of fasts in years gone by. But I want to call us as a congregation to this fast. Now, I know there's people that's got medical difficulties and stuff, and I have respect for that, and then work within it. Or if you're on, on medication, decide what you want to fast and just what, whatever you do, let us see God's face at this time. You know, this is the kind of the time of year where we're all kind of trying to li- land this plane. And, you know, we're looking forward to our holiday and we're going to do nothing for a month. But I believe spiritually God is co- actually calling us to alms. There's a great opportunity that is lying before us. Okay, so th- that slide is just sort of what I'm saying now. But um, this week we're going to pray. Next week, you're going to go. I'm going to go. And we're going to obey God. And we're going to do His will. You know what? And I, again, I, I, I do not know exactly what's going to happen from here. And, and, but I'm trusting God for a movement where the church is now actually mobilized. Where the church is now moving. Where you are flowing in the, by the Spirit of God on your life, fulfilling the call of that he wants to do in your daily walk through you in this world every day. There's initiatives, there's plans, there's thoughts in this crowd even here and even those that are listening that God has placed in you long ago already. Maybe he stirred it two weeks ago, but it's time to obey that and step out and say, God, what do you want to do? Where must I go? And we're going to come around you and we're going to love you and we're going to, you know, if you need resources, let's see if we can get resources. If you need money, we'll trust God for the money. If I don't know. <laughs> the church is leaving the building. And we're going and we're fulfilling the mandate of Christ on our lives. And 2021 is not going to be a calendar-driven year. I want to now speak prophetically. It's not going to be a calendar-driven year. It's going to be a spirit-driven year. Where you and I obey what God is saying us to do, telling us to do. And we're going to be freaked out initially. But we're going to have fun. And then we're going to grow in faith. And God's going to raise leaders. I want to say to the cell leaders, think big. Think big. Let's lead as well as we go through this time.